Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George here. Today we're taking a look at Pine Green 2024 Crosstrek Wilderness. So this is an exclusive color for the wilderness. I think this is the green equivalent to Cool Gray Khaki from the 2018 to 2023 Crosstreks. I quite like it. It's obviously a little bit subdued with it being overcast and snowing today, but it is a beautiful green, especially when the sun hits it. It's matte, no metallic in it. It's phenomenal. So the cross track for 2024 did get a redesign and this is the latest model for it. The wilderness, most off-road oriented cross track that they make. 9.2 inches of ground clearance, 411 final drive ratio, increased departure and approach angles and breakover angle. It's phenomenal. It's built for the pe person who goes off the beaten path. So at the front here, you do get an exclusive front bumper, front end on the Wilderness Crosstrek. You get this cladding along the bottom and it's unique. You have increased approach angle. So even especially right here, you can see the bumper kind of dives in that helps with that approach angle. So you're able to climb things without smacking your bumper as you would on a standard Crosstrek. And it's all this cladding because that's harder to mark up than paint. Forward facing six LED Gatling gun style fog lights, ridiculously bright. They're fantastic at night. Just like every other Crosstrek, smaller, more aggressively angled LED steering responsive headlight with high beam assist. Those anodized copper colored caps, those indicate where you can put the eye bolt for recovering other vehicles or yourself if you get stuck, which is unlikely to happen. On the hood, can't really see it right now because of the snow, but we have a matte black hood decal that's, uh, well, you can see where the edge is right there, but it's quite wide from there to there. It's quite wide. And that is designed to reduce sun glare for the driver, which is great when you're ascending things looking up. It, it makes a big, big difference. Great looking vehicle. Larger, more aggressive fender flares around the wheel wells. And those are designed to stop that area from getting rusted from rock chips and rocks being spat up at it. Exclusive 17 inch matte black aluminum alloy wheels. And you have Yokohama Geolander AT tires. So these are actually snowflake rated. So they are road legal on all roads in British Columbia. So it's not as good as a dedicated winter tire, but it's better than a standard all season. We've got additional cladding up the bottom of the cross track there. And you can really, you can see there's quite a bit of ground clearance on these, especially when you have them side by side with a standard cross track, but you also get cross track and anodized copper there. You can actually get these pieces on the door as accessories for the standard cross tracks. Wilderness badge, black mirror caps, integrated turn signals. Up top here, we have roof rails with anodized copper supports front and rear. I really do like how the anodized copper ties it all together. It goes well with the green. My favorite view of the Crosstrek, standard Crosstrek is the rear three quarter view. I think my favorite view of the wilderness is just the rear. I really, really like how aggressive this rear bumper is. And again, better departure angle. It's angled quite aggressively. You're not gonna smack your rear bumper coming off an obstacle or you're less likely to versus a standard Crosstrek. Reflectors, we do have those little circles in the rear bumper. Those are your backup sensors and they will actually apply the brakes if it thinks you're gonna hit something in reverse between speeds of one and 15 kilometers an hour. Anodized copper eye bolt locations and of course Subaru in the back bumper. I actually, not a huge fan of it. it. It does go good on the vehicle. It's just a personal preference thing. Blacked out badging, cross track all wheel drive, another wilderness badge to open the rear hatch. Stars, little rubber switch between them. Backup camera. And in the rear, there is a ton of room. Far more room than people expect in the cross tracks. Privacy cover with integrated handle. That's a new change for the 24s. Hides everything from the top of the seats down. This is removable if you need to. It's just a telescopic piece, really easy to do. Halogen cargo light, wilderness cargo tray, wilderness badge. And the lip in the new cargo tray is fantastic. If you have a spill or something leaks, it's really gonna help contain it. We've got access to our two hard mount physical tie downs up front. We've got bottle holders for tailgating in each corner. We've got grocery bag hooks. Underneath here, we have temporary spare tire or eye bolt and our spare tire tools. Little mountain motif there, including 
a cross draft. Up top, we do get an LED cargo light. Handle. Second row room in the cross rack is phenomenal. People don't expect there to be near this amount of storage room, passenger room, I should say. Good headroom, good leg room. You've got the black headliner in the wilderness model. Now, this isn't cloth. This isn't leather. It's the Star Tex soft touch all weather upholstery. This is a little bit different than the standard Star Tex that you see in the Outback and the Forester. I don't know if the camera is going to get close enough, but it, it's almost like it's two textures in it, two materials almost. It might end up being a little bit more breathable than the standard StarTex, but it is very, very comfortable. Fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. Two USBs for charging. We've got a map back pocket. And if you need it, we do have easy access to the anchors for child seats as part of the latch system. This is designed to be a step. This is textured. You're just supposed to stand on that when loading things onto the crossbars up top instead of on the tire. And the reason being the tire sits inside the fender so you won't get as much of your foot on that. And if I go straight up, I'm right at the back here. So I'm right here. I'm leaning over here to put something on a rack or in a box. So not quite as safe. Door card, light and gray, light and dark gray two-tone, soft touch armrest, anodized copper stitching, power window, bottle holder with a little bit of storage and child locks if you need them. Now, it is important to note that is not tied to the passenger side one. You have to do them individually. I do have that little silver bar sticking out of the door. That's an additional side crash impact safety bar and it latches right in there, which is very, very solid. Stops intrusion into the passenger cab in the event of a collision, which we hope never happens. It is a proximity key and right now it's locked so I can't, or it's running so I can't lock it. But all I have to do is touch these lines while the vehicle is shut off and the key's within 46 inches and it'll lock. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there is a slight beep going on saying, hey, you can't lock me. It's very, very subtle. Front door card looks very much like the rear door card. Soft touch, soft touch. Instead of hard plastic, soft touch armrest. The anodized copper contrast stitching, faux carbon fiber, accent. We've got our window lock, our four power windows, our power mirror. We've got bottle holder with a little bit more storage. And then we do get the upgraded Harman Kardon audio system. So it's a phenomenal audio system. I am a huge fan of it. Sounds really, really good. Power driver seat in the wilderness. Same seating material up front as it is in the second row. Just we have wilderness embossed on the headrest there. We do get the wilderness floor mats. That's standard equipment. And then more carb and fiber faux material scroll wheel for the brightness of the gauges on the inside here on the steering wheel we have anodized copper centerpiece we've got the stitching left hand side we have our bluetooth and audio controls you can issue voice commands you can accept phone calls you can hang up you can decline you can mute volume is now a toggle left to right and it's a really nice tactile feel i don't know if you can hear the click but it is satisfying and it does have some nice physical feedback when you're touching it. This used to be the volume knob and that changes our small little center display here. Gives us different information depending on what you want to look at. Time running versus distance traveled, what you're listening to, thermometer, that sort of thing. Source switches from AM to FM to satellite to Bluetooth to AUX to USB. Switch between our presets. Right hand side we have our adaptive cruise and we have our lane centering. Now both of these systems use these three black boxes, these color stereo eyesight cameras. This is the newest one. This is the third wide angle mono camera that you get with most new Subarus. So that increases the field of vision for it. And actually speaking of visibility, you've got pretty phenomenal visibility out of a vehicle this small. Uh, I, I don't find that there's many blind spots in the cross track. Of course, your mileage is going to vary depending upon what you're used to. But when I turn on the adaptive cruise, I get an image of the cross track. And there's four bars ahead of it, all the way down to one. That is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you'll follow at if you catch up while using cruise. I can decrease by pressing here, and each time I press, it goes down a bar, up, increases. Four bars at 100 kilometers an hour is roughly 150 to 180 feet behind the vehicle ahead of us. Lane centering, when I turn it on, in order to turn that on, cruise has to be turned on, but I don't have to have cruise set. So that's on, even if I don't have cruise set, it has to be turned on to use the lane centering. Lane centering at that little image of the steering wheel with hands. 
There's gray lines there. If the cameras can see the road lines above 60 kilometers an hour, it will illuminate white instead of gray on whichever side it can see, whether that's one or both. And if you get close to the lines, it'll actually give you gentle steering input, help keep you in the middle of your lane. Now it's easy to overpower. If you have to dodge a moose, a pedestrian, another vehicle, something in the road, it's not going to rip the wheel out of your hand and force you back, which is very nice. We've got intelligent and sport drive mode. So it defaults to intelligent for everyday driving sport. You go faster sooner. It's for more spirited driving. And when I press the S, you can see on the bottom left there where it says P for park S and you'll notice that yellow line's a little bit more aggressive. You go faster sooner. And of course, heated steering wheel. It does not heat the top here, just where you're supposed to keep your hands, but it gets nice and toasty, which is nice. We do have an 11.6 inch touchscreen. They've broken it into three portions. Top portion here, we've got dual function X mode. Now the wilderness does get an exclusive dual function X mode. It's like four by four low in a pickup. It's meant for rough off-road terrain. I wouldn't use it on a day like today where there's a little, little bit of snow, but something super steep or you're going through three feet of snow, it may be beneficial. Weather, it's part of the three month satellite radio trial. Widgets, now I can change these around. All I have to do is click. It brings up the screen. I choose the one I want to change. Well, let's get rid of oil temp. Let's turn it off. And you can see it's disappeared. But of course, you want to know what your oil temp is. You can change that. Your mileage is going to vary depending on what you're comfortable looking at. And then we've got what we're listening to. Center portion of the screen, main portion, we've got radio, media, and phone. Radio is, of course, AM, FM, Sirius XM. Media would be Bluetooth, AUX, USB. Phone allows you to hook up your phone to Bluetooth. Under apps, we do have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You will gain access to the My Subaru app after the vehicle is registered in your name. Access to the My Subaru app on the front page. Car info allows you to set maintenance reminders, gives you driving statistics. You can turn off the display. You can add additional shortcuts. You can turn on auto vehicle hold, which is like a brake holder for construction drive through or rush hour traffic. You can turn off traction control and you can turn on valet mode so people can't mess with your features. We do have a physical volume and tuning knob. We have our home button, which looks like a little monopoly house or an open envelope. And I can't unsee that since someone told me that. You can disable the auto start stop. You can add additional phones up to five vehicle or phones can be attached to the cross track at once. Only one can be connected, but you can have five stored. You can set driver profiles if you want. And then if you hit the little vehicle, you've got access to vehicle control, driving assistance, and more settings. Bottom third, climate control. Physical buttons on either side, and it goes up or down in 0.5 degree increments. And of course, being dual zone, you can have it set for a multitude of temperatures. Or I can simply click, it brings up the main portion. I can click, I can drag, I can sync it back to driver controlled really easily. I can control where I want my airflow, if I want AC on. It's fantastic. We've got these really nice big buttons, makes it hard to miss when you're trying to adjust your fan strength. I can make it so it only focuses the front or I can make it so it pushes air to the rear of the vehicle as well throughout the entire cab. Below that, we do have two USBs and an aux, and we also have a 10 watt wireless charger. When the light's on, it means it'll start charging something. If you put it down and it's compatible, you can turn it off. It does say, don't put metal objects there just in case. And there is all that, always that light, that illumination light. If your headlights are turned on, you'll have the light. Something I didn't show you, the backup camera. It does show you the top of the bumper there. So you have something to relate to. Rear assist braking's on, parking sensors are on, and I can clean the backup camera from inside the vehicle. It's fantastic. Great for our sloppy winters here. It is an automatic CVT. We can pull it to drive. We can go to manual mode. And when I do that, I can use the paddles, right paddle to upshift, left paddle to downshift. It is attached to the wheel, it's not on the column. So you do just have to be mindful of that if you're using that in full manual mode and you're in the middle of a turn. Heated seat switches, they've left physical switches instead of integrating them into the screen like they did the Outback Legacy in Ascent. Park brake, pull up to turn on, foot on the brake and push down to turn off. We've got two offset cup holders, 12 volt outlet, and these cup holders have little drink razors. On the center console, we also have a little bit of storage and a ton of storage in the center console, place to run cords out of, but there's no power points in there. And this is a nice soft touch armrest with the contrast stitching. Up top, we do have SOS and roadside assistance slash concierge. That's part of the three-year trial to the connected services you get with most new Subarus. 
halogen map lights. We've got our sunroof controls. And it is just a manual shade but and a regular size sunroof. But it does brighten it up quite a bit. Off the sun visors, we have sunglass storage. You're supposed to put the arms of your sunglasses through there to hold them. Vanity mirror. And I can extend it if the sun's directly at my left or right. Now, let me show you under the hood. That's the inside of it. So hood release is down here by the driver's left knee. Bottom left, you do have to reach back a little bit further than you think. Pull that. And then to open this hood, just like any other Subaru, facing the front of the car, go with your hand into the right-hand side of the hood to the right of the logo. Hand in, facing down. Move from right to left. Ah. <laughs> Hard to do one-handed when it's slick out. But you just move that little post right there in the center from right to left. 2.5 liter four-cylinder, naturally aspirated, produces 182 horsepower. It's the same 2.5 that they have in most of the lineup. And everything in yellow is what the average consumer is going to touch during our ownership. Washer fluid, brake fluid, oil. Your oil filter's up top. Coolant, dipstick, and of course we have our air filter. Easy access to the battery. And then to close it, I just like to drop it. I don't like putting my hand on it and pushing down. It feels like I'm going to break it. So that is my quick walkthrough of the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness in the Alpine Green. If you guys have any questions about this car, any of the features you saw on it, something you'd like me to elaborate on, please put it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. I'm Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George. Thanks for watching my quick walkthrough. If you guys have any questions, again, put it in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And if there's something you'd like to see in the future in a video, or there's some tech you want demoed, please put it in the comments as well. I'm always looking for new content to make for you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.